Hi, this is Matt Garrett. I'm doing an update on this engine project. Uh, this is kind of the uh, fuel injection stage uh, of this motor. We don't have any of the front drive completed yet other than uh, the brand new water pump because I've got a few parts that are being powder coated along with the uh, modified factory exhaust manifolds that are being ceramic coated right now. Uh, so I'm just waiting on those. And I could actually put, go back over here, the entire uh, tune port system on it right now if I wanted to, but I'm waiting on one bolt. When I uh, took that regulator apart, uh, adjustable, and re-cleaned it out and all that other stuff, I broke one of those bolts, and those are real hard to find. They're 3.5 millimeter by 0.6, so if you ever need one, it's 3.5 mm by 0.6. And uh, none of my go-to hardware stores or parts stores had them, so I just had to order them online. They're not hard to find online, but they sure are here just at your mainstream stuff. So uh, just to recap what this is, this is, you know, the, the motor is a uh, ZZ3 uh, GM Performance 350 that's been balanced uh, with JE pistons and uh, stuff. These are the ZZ3 heads, which are basically L98 heads. Most everything on this is almost like a stock setup, just more heavy duty with the steel crank, better pistons, higher compression, a uh, little bit of porting work, and obviously we have the better valve springs, which are part of the ZZ3 things, and then these cranes, full roller system on there, which are 1.5s. I didn't go higher because the cam's pretty hot already. Uh, now, this is an Edelbrock uh, high flow base system and a high flow runners, which you can't buy these anywhere. You may find them used. I messed around and kind of uh, searched for a long time to find something to replace my uh, stock uh, TPI with. I used to have a, a bigger base on here, a TPIS, I believe, or uh, one of the different companies and some different runners on this thing. And one of the many configurations of this motor, which, you know, this car's got 16, 17,000 miles on it and I've torn it up so many times I can't even tell you and that's not even really trying so, <laughs> to do it but this time you know going to go back with the big tube runners because with the with the with the gm tune port is these runners are really the weak link or the intake system is really the weak link the positive thing about the tune port is the torque which is going to give you just a buttload of torque uh, this motor with a blower is literally big block torque. I mean, maybe even 502, even 572 torque. It's going to be up there in near 600 foot pounds of torque, 570, something like that, with that blower and everything. But, you know, the horsepower is always going to be limited when you're comparing it to uh, a carburetor or a uh, like an LS motor, which is a zinger versus a torquer. Uh, so this is a more of a torquer. It's more like a big block. Uh, you know, horsepower on this motor with that blower and all that compression and everything. If I get 450 out of it, I'm doing real good so but the rpm bandwidth is really limited on these engines by the uh, runner size so if you have a 350 obviously your your rpms are lower now if you have a 305 the lb9 motor which is like this high performance irock over here this car is you know it's all stock but it has this is the five-speed car with the like the one le type engine uh, which is rare so these have the same style same size runners as the 350 350 but this motor will actually pull to about 5500 rpms pretty darn strong in fact i can't even remember what the, the red line says on these things yeah 5500 is where these are at uh, but uh, they'll actually run 57 58 and they still pull and so for a tune port motor that's actually good so your bandwidth is pretty good but you know your horsepower is weak on these i think these are a, a 240 horsepower motor 235 horsepower motor and uh, the torque's fair on it too but it is a five liter and so that's why you get away with higher rpms on these runners now on a corvette 350 like here's a stock 350 the rpms don't go that high and the whole limiting factor is the is the runners let's see if we can get that out yeah, you're looking at 5,000 on this. So, so you lose 500 just on the on the advertisement, which is really more like 4,800. So, they do 
you know, it'll rev higher than that, but it loses all of its power up there. Unlike, you know, the King of the Hill LT5, which will pull all the way to 7,200 RPMs, no problem. But that's a different animal. So back to the tune port, you're looking at these runners on this motor. And this is a 5.7 liter motor. And of course I could have built it up to a 383 or something like that too. But the problem there, even with the big runners, you're starting to limit your, your RPM bandwidth. And so if you cut your RPM bandwidth down because of the cubic inches, if you went to a 400 on this, it'd probably be back to 4,500. But on this particular motor with, you know, a 350, the way it's set up, the way these are, are, are lightly ported, uh, and I'll show you the intake or the uh, plenum in a minute, which is a stock plenum that's been modified. Uh, did that a long time ago for that other set of runners. But on this, you'll get, you know, probably 5,500 out of this motor, maybe 5,800 even if you're, if you're lucky. And so you don't want to over cam the motor to where it's revving to, you got a cam that pulls to 6,500 RPMs uh, because it's useless. The, 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 the air is going to run out here. However, the bandwidth torque on this thing, it'll run, you know, 2,000 RPMs up to, you know, 5,800 RPMs pulling 500 foot pounds of torque most of that way in that range. So, and now I'm not gonna give you that scenario for your 350 because this has a blower and it runs about eight to 10 pounds of boost on this thing. And uh, so that's really what's setting this motor up. But that blower doesn't help the bandwidth. The bandwidth is all gonna be based on this. And so your, your RPM range is gonna be right in there. And of course you're now, uh, the other issue I have that most people won't have because they're not using the Paxton blower is the Paxton blower is, is good for maybe 900 CF. And they say a thousand, but maybe 900. And so you don't, you can't really go beyond that. And if you build an engine that's a 400 cubic inch small block or something like that, and you're trying to rev this thing to 7,000, well, that, that blower becomes, you know, it's gonna add the torque down low, but it's gonna kill you up high. So you just have to match everything up. And that's what, what this whole point of this project is like. I'm trying to match all of this stuff up just as a mild, nice running motor. And it has been that before, before it broke here and there. And, you know, I'm running the stock manifolds and, and you know, the Corvette manifolds, you know, say what you want, they're pretty, pretty decent. Um, now they're not they're race stuff, they're not anything like that, but this, for this motor and this application, it, it's better than, the headache of headers and the headers are not going to give it that much more power and of course you know these manifolds do have some slight you know uh, if i had them here i'd show you but the uh where all the four runners of the intake or the exhaust manifolds join they've all been smoothed and polished a little bit just a little minor stuff that, that does help but it's just you know pettiness at that point so what we have here again is the edelbrock uh high flow uh basin runners and this is not an easy project to put on. These are hard. They're very, very difficult. And you have to make sure everything has to go in a certain way. These are just laying there now because all of these bolts down here like this, you gotta be able to tighten up. And you can't tighten those up even with some special tools with the valve covers on. Now you can tighten this one up and that one up and that one up, but then you've got the ones that are in the backside like this, which you can't get to very easily, especially when the plenum's on. Now, all of these are just on there. Everything's up, the gaskets are, are lined up, which of course these take bigger gaskets and you can't really uh, not use these because they will block, if you use the stock ones on there, they'll block you up. So you're just killing everything you've got. So the Edelbrock does make the gaskets. They're available on eBay. They're expensive, it's like $60, $70 just for these, these little gaskets right here. Now, it looks like it's all together, but it's not. On a tune port, if you tighten, these runners up, you will never get that plenum on there. So these are just sitting there loose enough, you can see it wiggle, to where I'll, I'm, I'm going to be able to put the plenum down on it and then sandwich it all together. And then I tighten it all up. You don't want to tighten your run, even on a stock one, you don't want to do that. You want to keep everything loose, put it all together, get it all in there, make sure your gaskets are there. Make sure your gasket's got the plastic little tabs in there. Uh, which on this, this is the problem with these. These are bigger. They don't make this gasket. So we have to take a set of like a Felpros or factory gaskets and, and we have to grind them up. And it's a mess and it's a pain in the ass and you may ruin one or two of them by the time you get them ground up. But we gotta grind those gaskets up and I'm over there on the bench working on that part time. So once you get 
these all your 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 uh, your plenum on there and everything hooked up then you can tighten these up but you don't want to go too tight and you don't because you can crack these things I've had buddies that back in the day that busted ears off of them because they just had them on there crooked and got zealous and, and, and they're cast they'll break they're not like the factory ones it'll bend uh, then you can put your valve covers on and then your wiring harness back in there and then obviously hook all these up and oh yeah we get these injectors wrong you know what doesn't matter because they all fire at the same time it's not a sequential <laughs> but you can put the wires where they go i'm just joking with that um let's see what else can i show you on this and i'll go to the bench um so that's that and you know this is kind of a night they're nicely finished out but what i did on this this has a set of uh, a ceramic uh, clear on it i cleared these things before i put them on there left them you know the, the raw and seeing how that's going to last over time versus letting them discolor and things like that so hopefully that'll give it a a longer better looking finish uh okay well that's kind of that on that and we can't even hook the fuel lines up because they have to drop through the air condition bracket, which the air condition bracket is one of the, the, the pieces that I'm getting coated just to make it look kind of all like this and, you know, look new like the, the water pump does. And then I have to, this particular car, because it has the blower, has the FMU unit, which is boost control fuel pressure, all mechanical. So that has to be put in line, which is what this is. And it gets hooked into to this and it's sensitive on the boost and I'll, I'll show that later when we, when we mess with that. So that's kind of the, the, the progress on that. And I'll go over to the bench. You can see the, uh, basically the plenum over here. And so, yeah, there's a plenum. Now these are ported out. Um, obviously these are bigger. I did this years ago, just you know, some mild porting on there to match them up to, I think at the time, the TPIS uh, runners, which are basically the same size as the Edelbrock. And a lot of guys will cut these out, and you can do this on the Edelbrock. You can cut this right out here, right out there, and you can go back over to the runner, match it all up, because these are all one piece cast and cut these in too to where these join. And what that does do is that will give you more uh, higher RPM uh, capability. It doesn't give you really more bandwidth. It pretty much takes away some of the torque down low and just transfers it up high. It's kind of like a one inch spacer under a carburetor. You can do that. So if you need to get that zing out of that motor a little bit more for whatever reason, that's a way to do it. But you do lose some of the torque, you know, just, it just tr I don't think you gain any horsepower. You may actually gain some horsepower, but you're going to lose, you know, torque equally too. So that's one of the things you can do. I am not interested in zinging the motor that high because I like to run it on torque and it goes well that way. Um, this is my throttle body and it's a bone stock one with the uh, aftermarket piece in there. Now it's a, one of these dual 54s, I believe. Um, and if you calculate the CFM on that, well, it's basically about the same as the Paxton. So there's not really any reason to go with a much bigger throttle body on this. Now, if you were running nor normally aspirated, I would. I would go with the, the, the dual 58. It's going to help you. Uh, it's going to give you more RPM. It's going to flow matched with this system. And because the Paxton is going to force more air in this, I can get away with, with the stock one, I think. And plus, the other reason is, too, is all of the packs and pieces are mashed up to this and i have to kind of really deal with that because these have to fit on fit on there and so not much else there uh mass airflow obviously the old when you first buy these cars knock the screens out of them uh if you see i have the screen on the other side and that's just in case anything goes through that blower that blower blows its uh uh it's uh impeller or something well that screen's going to stop it so that is a restriction that i run but i do it for safety and that's the blower there and i'll get to messing with that later when we get all that on there but uh that's kind of it i'm waiting on those few parts uh 
Oh, the gaskets. Here's the factory. When these are, they're Felpro. This is Felpro. Uh, this part number here, whatever this is, it's upside down. You can see it. That's just the TPI uh, Felpro gaskets, and this is a good quality when it has all the plastic uh, retainers, which hold your. I mean, you really can't put this thing together without those. These actually go to the runner side. Hold on to those. But I am taking just different tools uh, from files to. Uh, the die grinders and, and just matching these gaskets up to the ports that are already here on this modified plenum. So if I don't do that, well, obviously I'm just creating a restriction. And so that's stupid there. So I think I've got these pretty well done right here. I'm gonna just feel around. And they still need a little bit of work, but I've only done one side now. I'm just piddling with that until I get it done. But uh, also on this car, uh, this time I have completely, I'm not running the water through the, uh, the throttle body before I have for years. And the ones I've done before, I actually took a grinder and cut that down uh, to where it doesn't stick out so far looking stupid there. Uh, you can do that, it doesn't hurt anything. Um, and I left some of it there just, just in case for whatever reason I wanted to throw a hose back on it one day, which I doubt I ever will. I left enough of the nub there to where it, that could still be done. That one you never see. Um, you know, people say, oh, that's to keep ice from building up in them and things like that. And, and it is, you know, on a stock car that you drive around a lot uh, and you get in the winter time, the heated throttle body is, is a wise thing. Uh, but on this hot rod that already has a, a, a heater sitting in front of it like that I don't think I really need it and <laughs> I don't know why I've run it with the water in it for so many years but another thing that the Paxton has which I'll show you later is water injection and this is water injection system up here is this bag and this part of this hose right here and it has a pump down here that kicks on from a boost sensitive switch and you can adjust that switch and I usually run methanol in that thing, kind of a mixture. Uh, and that injection comes in right here onto that, and it squirts straight in your throttle body from that thing right there. So that basically acts as your, let's just call it a rig of an intercooler. That's all it is. Uh, because the Paxton has absolutely no intercooler, no provisions for it. And, uh, you know, you could reinvent the wheel and create one for it. The, they're just such a small CFM and small boost uh, unit to begin with. It's almost pointless, so it's just best to just run it that way. Paxton on this car, like I said, is more nostalgic. It does help the power quite a bit in the mid-range and low end for sure. But if you're after big horsepower numbers, that it's just a it's it's a horsepower blocker is what it is at that point. Um, but like I said, you can run torque with this thing and still get 450 horsepower with one of those Paxtons and you know big block torque and on this four plus three car with a modified overdrive and all that this car runs really good and uh, it always has and i'm hoping it runs even better this time so anyway that's all i can think of right now i'll, I'll make another video when i get some of my parts back and uh, i'll put all this top together and go over some tricks with that that i've learned over the years but that's all for now